Hello, this is Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you're watching Video Voters Guide. We're here with the support of Metro East Community Media to interview candidates running for the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Karen Spencer. Karen is running for Metro Councilor District 5. Welcome, Karen. Thank you for having me, Debbie. Thank you to the League of Women Voters. I appreciate this opportunity. You're welcome. We're really going to be able to do it. Our first question, tell, tell us about yourself and why you're running for Metro. I am a 20-year uh, uh, Portlander living in this region. I came here for a great opportunity uh, to work for a great company, and I just fell in love with this area, the natural resources, the, uh, the warmth of the people, and, uh, and I really want to ensure that uh, folks, you know, fall in love with Portland area the same way that I fell in love with it for many generations to come. I have a background in law and policy, in engineering, and also in strategic planning, two elements that I believe are essential uh, for uh, a role on Metro Council. And I just have a passion for our region and a passion for our natural areas and our spaces. Thank you. What challenges to the effective and efficient operation of our metropolitan government will result from the pandemic? And how do you propose to meet those challenges? Well, we've already seen challenges uh, due to the uh, closure of the uh, visitor venues like the Oregon Convention Center and the Expo Center. And uh, those are, will have reverberations uh, throughout our community. And uh, essentially, we've had to lay off 40% uh, of the Metro employees. And I expect that we are going to have to do more belt tightening. Metro relies on uh, money from the visitor venues. Uh, it relies on excise taxes related to waste management. So if we have less commercial activity, we have less waste management. Uh, we, we rely on transit, transient taxes as well. And you know, I have experience managing teams through uh, difficult uh, situations, maybe not this difficult, but certainly uh, through uh, layoffs and I, the first step is really to um, stabilize the organization, uh, make sure that current employees feel, feel valued and understand what their roles are, and then look at the programs and see what things can we stop doing, what things can we defer to later, and then what things are essential and critical that need to be done now. And certainly what I would be looking at are what are the things related to our economic recovery that are going to help us get out of the situation that we're in? Right. Thank you. Metro's in the process of drafting a regional transportation measure. What expectations do you have that the planned expenditures will achieve state and regional goals for reducing greenhouse gas emissions? So based on Metro's own reporting on this, the the amount of savings on greenhouse gases is going to be relatively modest. That doesn't mean that the transportation measure shouldn't be done. It, the, a task force looked at this uh, for over a year, 48 individuals from across our community looked at it for over a year, and they weighed safety, uh, efficiency, resiliency, uh, making sure that we were serving underserved uh, communities. So uh, for this measure, I believe that they struck a balance, and that's really what voters are looking for when we think about our metropolitan region. Uh, they're looking for a balance between growth and preserving the things that we really like about our area. Thank you. How would you assess Metro's efforts to address the affordable housing and homelessness crisis? I, I would give it good marks. Uh, it, you know, Metro traditionally did not have a role when it came to housing, and it was really the leadership of Sam Chase that, uh, uh, you know, pushed, propelled Metro into the addressing affordable housing through the affordable housing bond measure in 2018, and now the homeless services measure that's on the ballot for uh, this May. Uh, there's more that needs to be done, and that certainly is my first priority is housing. Uh, addressing houselessness, affordable housing for folks who need government assistance, and then 
uh, creating more housing so that we can make this area more livable for more families. Thank you. What is your position on the Metro ballot measure 26 to 10 to support the homeless services with high earners tax and a business profits tax? Please go ahead and talk about that. Yeah, I, I support the measure for two reasons. The first is that the business community, activists, and Metro work together to structure the measure. And we, de we do need it. Voters tell me at the door that homelessness is one of their key issues and now it's also a business issue the second reason i support it is that supportive services like those that will be provided through the measure enhance other housing initiatives the research shows this so essentially what we're doing is turbocharging the work voters have already said that they want done all right well we still have a couple of minutes what is on your mind that you want to share yeah, I'd like to share a little bit more about my uh, background. I, I have extensive experience in uh, 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 educationally and also a, a, as far as my career. So uh, if I could share that for a moment, uh, I'd appreciate it. So I think that informs uh, a lot of, uh, of how I think and, and what I'm wanting to accomplish. So I'm a graduate of MIT in chemical engineering. I am a graduate of Harvard Law School. I spent uh, 10 years working at a law firm in Silicon Valley. I became a partner. I was one of the uh, first uh, uh, African women of partners at a major firm in Silicon Valley. I was counsel for Nike Golf for nine years. I was the only woman uh, serving as lead counsel for a golf company, and I was uh, also the only person of color uh, serving as lead counsel for a golf company. I am a founder of a startup, and that uh, startup, we help first-time business buyers buy and operate businesses. Uh, in addition to that, I've done strategic planning for Nike Golf, Nike Legal, and the Nike Patents advanced research and development team. I've been on the uh, Portland Parks Foundation Board, the Metro's Nature and Neighborhoods Capital Grants Committee, uh, and the Oregon Youth Development Council, and the uh, Portland Utility Board. All of this uh, is, you know, because I'm so passionate about our communities. I want folks to have access to nature, to play areas. I want neighborhoods where people can uh, live, work, and play together, and, and we can all have good paying jobs where we can thrive. Thank you for telling us more about yourself. I think that uh, takes us pretty close to time. So thank you very much, Karen. Thank you. This has been Video Voters Guide, a reminder that the primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Please be an informed voter. You can visit www.vote411.org to learn more about all of the races and ballot measures on your ballot. Please exercise your right to vote and thank you for watching.